Can you get a great working, quiet Office Mini computer with Windows 11 at a good price? The new Windows Mini PC Budget King might be Feelings EQ13. But is it? Let's inspect. Right, welcome, great to meet you guys and girls, I'm the Tech Mishka on the channel, we expect a lot of cool and interesting tech and this here is powered by the modest sounding N200 processor by Intel. It's a mini computer designed by B-Link, one of the most popular and reputable Chinese brands for such kind of small sized Windows based mini PCs. This is called the EQ13 and Despite the fact it belongs to their entry-level portfolio, they do promise pretty decent performance, especially about the power consumed and the price that they ask you to pay for it. Therefore, in this video, we're going to put it under some serious testing, not just about office tasks, multimedia, the regular kind of document editing and stuff. I'm going to try some gaming and other a bit more intensive tasks as well, with the goal to figure out which are the strong and the weak sides, whether that's a good fit for you, and of course, have a lot of fun while reviewing. Let's dive into it. Well, for sure, the price is very attractive. It is less than the closest Chinese rival from more fine and significantly more affordable than Gigabyte and Asus alternatives equipped with this kind of processor. But I managed to find some corners cut, so let's keep on inspecting and see how much this really matters. Unboxing experience is close to excellent. The pack is nice, you can see the details about the hardware included, I'm testing the edition with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs M2 drive, which happens to be the only choice at the moment. The mini PC arrives well wrapped and protected. In fact, its design is something to praise. And trust me, with mini PCs this really matters. Often they're being used on a desk or next to a TV and a glossy finish will guaranteedly irritate you with all the fingerprints left. Unlike the top cover here, which has a dustproof design, laser faced top panel and air intake which is meant to come from the bottom. It's a second B-Link made mini PC in a row that ditches the option for a VESA mount, but if you need such, I have used Velcro mounting and if you have some concerns about the cooling, let me dismiss all these issues. EQ13 has unibody chassis, dustproof design, a lot of connectivity ports, including a dual LAN setup, meaning that, yeah, you can well use it as a home firewall. And once you get to see the accessories, which are just HDMI cable and a power cord, you might realize that there's something quite nice happening. Let me give you a hint. Side by side with this other mini PC, the power supply is the difference, integrated inside the EQ13's chassis at no extra scale, making it super portable and independent from the proprietary connectors. If only there was a Type-C power delivery option, but yeah, maybe it will show up with some of B-Link's higher-end models. Concerning the hardware, besides the many ports on the back, I'd like to share with you what is on the inside. There's the N200 CPU, which is older lake generation, with up to 3.7 GHz in boost mode. There's 16 GB of DDR4 RAM, upgradable, a PCI Express Generation 3 compliant M2 drive, the new edition of Intel's UHD graphics, there is Wi-Fi 6 support based on an Intel controller, Bluetooth 5.2, optimized cooling, and all of this runs Windows 11 Professional Edition out of the box. I know for a fact that those of you who are enthusiastic about computers and their hardware already have their expectations about the overall performance, but I do have some interesting things to share and let me present my point of view about the hardware inside. Uh, first of all, the most interesting thing happening here is the implementation of the N200 line of these Intel CPUs, which belong to the older Lake generation. They have pretty decent performance and, as a matter of fact, the architecture of the CPU here is quite similar to the Generation 7 and 8 core i5 CPUs, however, with all the bells and whistles offered by the latest Intel generations, plus a lot more capable iGPU, which Intel right now are providing with their most high-end processors as well. And that's 
a serious performance booster. The other really remarkable part about the N200 is the fact that at 6 watts TDP, it offers everything that I've just mentioned. The thing that is probably a bit disappointing is the fact that B-Link are integrating DDR4 memory. Well, think of it as something slightly less performing than DDR5. I know it's mostly in my head, but knowing that it's not the latest and greatest is kind of irritating. We have good grade of the wireless controller. We have Bluetooth connectivity. I have certain concerns about the storage, which I suggest we should inspect together because now before all the testing in terms of performance, gaming and all other sorts of tests, I'd love to make a quick teardown and figure out what kind of repairs and upgrades we can do all the time on the EQ13. There are four rubber pads covering the screws at the bottom. Gently remove these because they have to come back once you're done. The bottom cover is in no way holding any wires or other equipment, so perfectly safe to lift it up. Plus, Billing provides this useful pull tab. The internal layout is quite impressive about tidiness, and I'd appreciate it if at some point Billing think of a special edition with transparent bottom or overall construction. You can access the RAM right away. Unlike other more expensive models, here EQ13 is not equipped with a cruiser made memory. To get to the M2 slots, you have to remove this heatsink, quite an impressive one indeed in terms of size mostly. The drive in here is yet another component, only having the AZW stamp, it's the name of the factory producing the B-Link line. Having two cuts on the connector here means that we have a SATA-based drive, meaning that performance might be limited. It seems to be possible to fit in a proper NVMe drive though. Keep in mind that while there is a second M2 slot, it's just a single PCI Express lane, meaning that theoretical throughput is not going to be more than one gig. We can also see the M2-based wireless controller, and that's what is quite easy to access from here. If you try hard, you may be able to reach to the fan and the CPU area, which are on the other side of the system board. Overall, I continue to be impressed with the internal layout. At the same time, I'm slightly disappointed with the very basic grade of the RAM and the storage, but continue to have high hopes about the performance. And we're going to begin testing with the storage piece, because I actually have some very positive news. I seem to sympathize Billing's decision to use a TCL SATA as opposed to QLC NVMe, because while price might be comparable, the consistency of the former one is apparently way better. The QLC-based drives will usually go below 100 megabits per second as soon as the cache is full and you use more than one third of the drive capacity, while the SATA here stays strong no matter what. After all, I guess you're probably very interested in the CPU, the GPU and maybe the overall performance, something that we can quite easily check through some gaming. Note, this is not a PC with gaming orientation, but actually given the capable iGPU inside, not bad. Counter-Strike 2 is playable, well, not in 4K, not with all the highest graphics modes, but it's good, way better than expected. So no surprise they compared the CPU to some core i5 generation 8 series. Probably the greatest return of investment would be the electricity bill in the end of the month, because with the native 6 watts TDP, you can notice that Together with all the remaining components working together, we hardly go over 30 watts total consumption. A result comparable to the consumption of two really strong LED bulbs. With some smart refinements in the window settings, you may achieve very reasonable balance about performance per watt. Speaking of software, this is Windows 11 Pro licensed, no bloatware, no spyware. Still, if you want to be on the safe side, feel free to make a clean install at the beginning. I've never ever I've never had a Windows-related issue on my billing devices, though. If other operating systems are favorable, I've tried some Linux distributions and all seems to work well with all the hardware showing up without any driver issues. Let's go for some more use cases. Office tasks with this computer are something to enjoy doing. Well, at least when it comes to the performance and the snappiness from the computer side. I have forced myself to use the EQ13 for every single computer-related task in my daytime, except for video editing. Now that it is impossible here, it's just faster on my primary station. 
If you work with documents, some basic 3D modeling, coding, analytics, it just clicks so well with the performance of EQ13. Multimedia is also a suitable implementation, and since we have a very up-to-date Intel iGPU, you can rely on all the popular multimedia codecs being integrated here on a hardware level. There are some cool options to explore the BIOS as well. Unfortunately, there is no way to actually adjust the CPU TDP or reserve more RAM for the graphics. Looks like B-Link have decided that we don't need to touch these values. Nevertheless, even at its top load, EQ13 is unbelievably quiet. If you wonder whether any drawbacks are present, I'd certainly mention the single DIMM layout, the somewhat limited storage performance and perhaps the temporary lack of choices for config with more RAM or storage. Feels like that at this price point, fancy features such as eGPU support, USB 4 and so on remain out of question. I think that based on all these tests and real life use cases, we can conclude that B-Link are no longer afraid to make bold decisions, especially when it comes to prioritizing good overall user experience. And it's a fact I was very concerned about the grade of storage and RAM use over here, but so far you know, they've proven to be pretty good, especially knowing the price of around $250 and the fact that inside we have a 6-watt TDP processor. That's a pretty remarkable achievement. Well, I, I definitely can recommend the EQ13 for being an excellent solution for a long-term multimedia server or probably uh, quite a small and nice computer for daily or office tasks. Even for some gaming, in case you're on a budget, that would be a pretty solid choice. So that's my take on this computer. In case you want to share yours, comments are down below the video and we can carry on the conversation. In case you want to buy your own mini computer or get to know more, you can check the video description for some more information. And in case you enjoyed, please give me a like, it means a lot to me. You can subscribe to the channel for more cool tech inspections and you can become a channel member in order to see some of the behind the scenes in terms of what I do in order to create these videos or to support me in this journey to inspect more and cool tech. And thank you very much for watching this episode. I'm the Tech Mishka, would love to see you again, so stick around. Have a great day, bye bye.